I really respect your stamina. I've seen the program. I must be speaker number 40, but I might be one of the first <laughs> business speakers. So sometimes that causes excitement in the rooms that talk about sustainability, because is business the problem or is it the solution is on your minds, at least on some of yours. Um, I'm very pleased to be here. I'm extremely excited, Johan, and all of the rest of your board that you have pulled this off. Um, there's a desperate need to come together in the world and talk about um, all the issues related to food, whether it's the humanitarian, the environmental, or the economical. And uh, there is no better place than Stockholm to do it. So thanks for the invite, and uh, very happy to be here. Um, I'll take the business angle at talking about the topic. I'll fly high over the topics, as you would expect from somebody representing the World Business Council. And then Feike Sibisma, he will be uh, joining me on stage later. He's the CEO of DSM, and he's one of the coolest real-life CEOs when it comes to uh, breakthrough solutions. So uh, more of business later. Um, as it was said, I run this place with the impossible name, the World Business Council for Sustainable Development. Try that on your job interview when you're slightly nervous. Um, if it make it easier for you, I will also listen to WBCSD. It's a collection of 200 of the largest companies in the world, across sectors, across regions, uh, all coming together with one purpose, and that is to really push the agenda for sustainable development and the role that business can play. It's not only these 200 companies, it's also a global network of in 67 countries now. In total, 35,000 companies are members of these networks. And through that massive network, we're rolling out and, and implementing the solutions that we have identified. And I'll talk about some of the relevant solutions for your topic um, this afternoon. Um, I think I... I kind of expect to be talking for a room of the converted again. You know, the problem with sustainability meetings is that we all meet because we take this serious and we want to make a contribution and have an impact. But we, we kind of know all these stories already. Um, but if I tell the story, I always fly at it. It's a pretty complex puzzle we're trying to solve. If only this was simple and singular, it wouldn't be that hard. But it's not. It's complex. And I'll just throw four numbers at you. Is there anyone in the room who has an idea what these four numbers could mean? And please don't break the left part of your brain. There is no mathematical correlation between these. I mean, there's no trend analysis or statistics. No answer. Hmm, that's weird. Four hours into uh, this seminar. But we'll, we'll try some more. Uh, $750 billion. Every six seconds, a child dies from hunger. This was six seconds. Six seconds. Another child has just died from hunger. Um, my office is on Lake Geneva, Switzerland. I could fill Lake Geneva three times over with the water that is used in this issue. And 11% of the world's CO2 is lost in this topic. So anyone who has an idea now, what do these four numbers have in common? It's food, loss, and waste in our world. 32% of the food that the world produces gets lost on the field because it doesn't reach the market, or wasted because the date is it's over its date, or we've shoved more on our plates than we can eat. But it's not just 30% of the food that is lost. It is $750 billion of value that we throw away or lose. A humanitarian tragedy, and if Feike comes on stage later, he will talk about that part. Every six seconds, a child dying from hunger. When we throw a third of the food that we have away, it's just a scandal. We, we should. The alarm bells should be ringing. We, we shouldn't be sitting here. We should fight to, to stop this. If water stress is going to be a big topic, then why do we throw three times the Lake of Geneva? And I don't know if you've ever been, but it takes you three hours by car to cross it, and it's 800 meters deep. There's a lot of water in that lake. 
And if climate change is the stress point that we all believe it is, then here's 11% of CO2 emissions that we can immediately stop. And I don't care whether you fly at this from an economical, a humanitarian, an environmental or a water point of view, it just shows that in sustainability, almost every topic is interrelated. It's not just environmental or social or economical. We need to look at things holistically. And there's, there's funny things to be found. The healthier the food, the lower the footprint. Or reversed, the unhealthier your diet, the bigger the impact on the environment. So all these developing countries, the Chinas and Indias, growing their meat consumption is going to put enormous stress on the environment. All of us obese people, including myself, we could really reduce the impact uh, on, on the planet, but also on our own health by making better choices. Urbanization is, is often mentioned as one of the key trends in the world. You know, in 30 years from now, 70% of the population in the world will live in cities. This is the city of London. Its footprint, its ecological footprint is 42 times its geographical size. Two times the size of UK would be needed to live the lives that everybody in London lives. Imagine a world where there will be many Londons. It's going to be a pretty complex puzzle to solve. And I know this is a room full of converted, so I could show you a hundred more of these slides and you would all fall asleep saying, yeah, 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 we know this. The problem in sustainability is not that we don't know we have a problem. We do. We know we have a challenge. The problem is not that we don't know what to do about it. We know the solutions, and I'm sure many has already, have already passed the stage here today. The issue is we're not yet able to scale them up. We do not generate the impact at the speed that the challenges need. And that's what the whole agenda of the World Business Council has become. And scaling up in our minds has three words, and I, I would like you to remember those. The first one is we need innovation. The second one is we need valuation. And the third one is we need collaboration. We need to innovate business solutions according to the stress points that science has given us. And I'll show you the stress points in a minute. We need to work on the business case for sustainability. Too often I hear business people say, yeah, 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 it sounds all very nice saving the world, but can you please show me the business case? Where is the DCF calculation? And sometimes there is, you know, saving fuel and being smarter with resources, there are business cases. But sometimes there is not. And then what? Are we still going to destroy the planet or not take care of the people? So we need to improve the way we think about business cases. And the third one is we need to finally learn to understand that no party alone, not the biggest, mightiest company, not the World Business Council, not any other organization represented in the room here, can fix these issues alone. We need to collaborate. And that's why, again, I applaud the EAT initiative, bringing science, business, governments, and civil society together, and hopefully annually making real progress in solutions that can be scaled up. But if we get innovation, valuation, and collaboration to work, then we'll see scaling up of solutions implemented at, at pace. There's always questions about what is sustainability. And, you know, there's 500 people in this room. If I asked you all to write it down, I would probably get 500 different definitions. We use this one. We're going to go to a world where 9 plus billion will live in 2050. It might even touch 10 billion people. We're at 7 billion, 7.1 billion people today. So we're going to add 3 billion more people to the planet. Not only that, we're also going to grow from 2 billion middle class to 5 billion middle class. People who all will want to eat meat and drive cars and do other things that middle class people have been doing for a long time. At the end of it all, we want all people to live well. We should stop killing children from hunger and preventable diseases and other bad things. We should give people access to education, to health care, to energy. But, and that's the big constraint, we must do this within the boundaries of the planet. And here in Stockholm, one of the co-authors of the Planetary Boundary Framework is based, and that is a crucial framework for all of us to adhere to. 
Vision 2050, we, we wrote this document about three years ago. You can download it on wbcsd.org. It's, it's a good piece of work, but it's a vision and it's 2050. The economy has been bad. Many companies have been asking themselves, can we survive this economic recession? So what are we going to do short term? Short termism is one of the big challenges when it comes to sustainability. So talking about a vision 2050 for too long is not going to get us home. And therefore, we've put in place a thing called Action 2020. What can business do now that scales up solutions that we know exist and that will get us on track to a sustainable world? So for that, we have looked to the facts. And not just the facts from a magazine, but we've worked with the Stockholm Resilience Center and through them with hundreds of scientists around the world. We've worked with the World Resource Institute, the leading think tank in the world, to ask ourselves what are the priorities that we all should think about. How do we translate them into goals, what we have called must-haves, and then once we have these goals, what are the solutions that we can put in place? These are the priority areas. So if you ask the science in the world, where should business focus its sustainability efforts, it bring the solutions, these are the nine priorities. Five of them are green, that's what we call the natural capital uh, priorities. Three are blue, the social capital priorities. And one is blue, gray, is, or green, is, that's what we call the nexus. So climate change, obviously. Nutrient elements to do with the runoff of fertilizers, ecosystems, harmful substances, and water. You can immediately see out of these nine, Five are, have a direct relationship with food, the food supply chains, and our ability to feed 10 billion people within the planetary boundaries. So for each of these priority areas, we have defined goals. We can't go over a trillion tons of carbon while feeding all the people, while giving access to energy. And then we started developing innovative business solutions. So some relevant areas for the discussions here we need to simply halve the loss of food. It is stupid to produce food and throw a third of it away or lose it on the land. It's stupid environmentally, economically. It's lousy for the smallhold farmers who have produced this food but don't get the income out of it. And it's a tragedy for the children dying each day. We simply need to halve it. We need to get conscious about it because it's one of those slipping slow, hidden killers. And therefore, the WRI, the World Resource Institute again, has now taken the lead in developing a food loss and waste protocol so that we all, in the standardized way, begin to measure this. We need to get serious about the way we work with ecosystems and land. There's two billion hectares of degraded land in the world, twice the size of China. If you plant forests on one half, and you get the productivity on the other half, most of our sustainability challenges will be back under control. And we need to invest in climate smart agriculture. Whether we like it or not, if we pull all stops out, we're gonna maybe be, be able to keep the temperature rise below two degrees, but even at two degrees, weather patterns will change beyond belief, will completely change the, the water and the, the rain type of patterns in the world, and we must get agriculture ready for that to be able to feed the world. And on each of these blocks, the 200 companies inside the WBCSD and the 35,000 in the regional networks are now beginning to develop solutions and get them to scale. The second topic I mentioned is we need to get the business case up. How do we improve the business case? And that's going to be hard for some business people. We just need to internalize the externalities. There is no way around it. We have to stop damaging the planet, polluting the planet, and not pay the price for that. It's got to be included in the price or the cost of things we do. Whether it's carbon pricing, whether it's a price on water, we have to start measuring what we do. Because if we don't value it, it has no value and it won't be managed. We need to really start thinking about the cost of inaction. The time of thinking this will last my day is over. Uh, I've been in conversations 10 years ago where people would tell me these stories. You now just have to need, read the news. And you don't have to go to sub-Sahara Africa to find droughts. 
North America is where you see it happen. If Paul Polman, the CEO of Unilever, would be here, he would tell you the stories that they make calculations now in their global supply chains and have identified at least $300 million of annual losses as a result of changing weather patterns in their supply chains. This is going to rise. The, the cost of action is today already lower than the cost of inaction, and we must act. The last thing that will happen is the accountants will save the world. This is in most sustainability conferences, particularly at uh, 5.43, when people want to go to dinner, is, is kind of lost to the audience. But the standardization of how companies will measure their performance, how it will be reported, and how it will be valued by capital markets, that's where the real lever to scale will be. So all the initiatives, whether it's GRI, SASB, integrated reporting or others, are key for all of us to keep track of and to really include in your thinking. So I'm basically here just to warm up for Veike Sibisma, who tells you the story about DSM and the impact they have. But I'm also here to please call on you. Let's not make this another sustainability conference where we all travel to beautiful Stockholm and enjoy ourselves in a great dinner and listen to some fantastic speakers. But let's really go home with homework. Come back next year and tell us what solution that you have engaged in. There is a fast range of solutions that is being um, put out there today. If you go to action2020.org, you will find an overview of the solutions that are being worked on. The list is far from complete. Any solution that is on there can use more businesses and more help to get them to scale. But reach out and become part of the action. Because what we have built, and Johan Rockstrom has been one of the major architects of it, is a platform that can bring business solutions to scale. So my call on you is bring it to scale, enjoy the conference, but come back next year with real solutions. Thank you.